If Apple decides to stick with the same design as the iPhone 11 this year, I'm gonna be mad as hell. Let's get down to this week's news and rumors on the Apple Core. Okay, so I am very confused. If you've been following the show and Apple rumors over the past few months, you'll likely be aware that the iPhone 12 or the next flagship iPhone due in September this year is supposed to bring a fresh new design. We've seen side-by-side -side comparisons with 3D printed mockups to give us an idea of what to expect. And of course, plenty of renders. One of my favorites is this video from Concepts iPhone on YouTube. As you can see, it's kind of similar to the look of the iPhone 4 and 5 from years past, potentially adding an extra lens at the back on the higher end models, which will likely be a time of flight camera rather than a new focal length. But this week, well, that old is new again design we've been expecting is not looking so sure. A new report from Mac or Takara, cited by a number of places like Apple Insider and 9to5Mac, seems to say that the iPhone 12 might look a lot like the iPhone 11. The only thing that will be significantly different is the camera module. Seriously, I'm gonna cry. <coughs> The Japanese site spoke to an unnamed Chinese supplier which said to expect a very similar metal chassis to the iPhone 11 with slightly bowed edges. Now, this is almost the complete opposite to what renowned Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo has said who expected the new iPhone to have a quote, more complex segmentation design and rely on new injection molding, i.e. welcome back the look of the iPhone 4 and 5. The good news is, I guess, the report still confirms the three different iPhone 12 screen sizes we're expecting. One 5.4 inch, two 6.1 inches, and one 6.7 inch phone. However, the largest screen size iPhone is now expected to be taller and slimmer than the current iPhone 11 Pro Max. Maybe it will look more like this render, also from Concepts iPhone on YouTube. But here's the thing. I think the interpretation of that Mac Otakara report is up for debate. My read of it is that those four new iPhones we're expecting in September will all have the same overall new design, with the difference mainly being the sizes, the camera modules at the back, and the number of microphone holes at the base. And the photos in the article are all referencing that square edge design rather than something that looks like the iPhone 11 that we know now. Let me know what you think. We do have another rumor though about a new color option for the iPhone 12, probably the Pro and the Pro Max. Instead of the midnight green we know now from the 11 Pro, it could come in a navy blue. Anyway, amongst all the confusing news this week, we have a glimmer of hope. A new patent spotted by Patently Apple showcases a new OLED display with inbuilt fingerprint reader. The patent describes it working in two modes, one for optical sensing to allow Touch ID to work under the screen, and the other mode would be touch sensing, which is presumably for regular use as a touch screen. It will be capable of discerning between water and an object like a finger, or ambient light and a finger. Some ultrasonic readers on Android phones can work when your hands are a bit wet. So we'll have to see how Apple will differentiate this technology from what's currently out there. What we do know is that Qualcomm is likely going to power Touch ID's comeback on the iPhone, and its new ultrasonic reader has the added bonus of needing not just one, but two fingers to unlock a phone. Whether or not we'll see Touch ID on the iPhone 12 or the 2021 iPhone remains to be seen. But seriously, if the iPhone 12 ends up looking like the iPhone 11, I will not be a happy camper. Look, there's nothing wrong with the current design. I just want something different to spice things up. Let me know what you think and I'll share your thoughts on next week's show. Time to take a look at the other fruity headlines you need to know this week. Apple will start producing the low cost iPhone 9 or iPhone SE 2, depending on who you talk to, in February, according to a report in Bloomberg. This means expect to see it launch as soon as March, just as I reported on last week's show. Apple reportedly put the brakes on end-to-end -end encryption on iCloud about a year ago because of pressure from the FBI. This news comes just a week after President Trump tweeted saying that Apple should enable a backdoor to help law enforcement agencies access locked iPhones. Another patent granted to Apple this week includes an enhanced PPG sensor for the Apple Watch. That's used to measure heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, and so on. 
This comes a week after Fitbit finally turned on its SpO2 sensor in a range of watches and trackers to help measure blood oxygen levels. That's all for this week's wrap, but some very exciting news. Vanessa will be back on your screens in the coming weeks to bring you even more Apple Core. I'll see you next week.